Hey everyone, welcome back to another pet video. I'm Timo and this time I'm going to be breaking down each step on making 3D printing filament straight from pet bottles. I'll let you know what to watch out for, share some helpful tips and tricks and even go over issues that we faced so that by the end of this video you'll be able to make pet filament. I've broken the process into 9 steps from prepping the bottles to 3D printing your desired print. Sounds fun? Great, let's jump right in. To get started, you'll need a shredded plastic shredder, an arid polymer dryer, a precision 350 or 450 filament maker, a 3D Vo feeder, and then the following accessories, cutters, scissors, a piece of cloth, acetone, dishwashing soap, some water, a 2.5 mm hex key, around 400 grams of DivoClean mid-temp, of course an empty spool, and a properly ventilated environment. Before we start recycling, we need to sort our plastics based on polymer type. Since most plastic caps are either made from PE or PP, we'll need to separate them from the PET. So first I have to unscrew the caps and then get rid of the safety rings. Just like that. Now I have to get rid of the stickers. I can use scissors for this. And then I can rip off the stickers. Now there's still some glue on there, so I have to remove it with acetone. So I have to be very careful with this. And then I just rub it off. So now we need to wash the inside. So now we need to reduce the bottle in size to be able to feed it into the shredder. I'm gonna cut it into small pieces. Just like this. And we collect them in there. But there are different options. We can use a vacuum cleaner. Or we could simply crush the bottles by hand. So now we have to reduce our pet to particle size smaller than four millimeters in order to feed it in correctly. And then we get our regrind. And we can check if the size is smaller than four millimeters with the caliper. And I can see that this is much bigger than four millimeters. So what I can do is I just feed it in again. And then just Thread it once more to get an even finer particle size. So now we have our pet particles under 4 millimeters in size, so now we can start drying. So I put it in the hopper, tighten the hopper, connect this cable, and then close the lid. And I have to put in the correct settings. So I have to put in 140 degrees Celsius, which is a very common temperature for drying pets, and 5 hours. So then I press apply and then I can start the drying process. One more important side note here. As soon as you finish drying the material, it will start to absorb moisture from the air again. So that means you have to use the regrind directly after drying or you have to seal it in a vacuum container. So we have a dried batch of pets and we can get started on the extrusion. But uh, actually we need to perform sort of a transitioning step because by default there's material inside the extruder and usually it's PLA when you have a new machine. So we need to push out this material from the machine in order to transition to PET. But the problem here is that they are processed at different temperatures. So PLA, it can be processed between 180 and 240 degrees before it degrades. But PET has to be processed between 250 and 300 degrees, so there's not really an overlap. So that's why we need to use a transitioning material. So we're gonna use that transitioning material to push out the PLA, then we can increase the temperatures, and then we can use PET to push out the transitioning material. So let's get started. So I'm gonna set the temperatures all to 200 degrees, because at that point, the PLA will be able to melt, 
and I can transition to my purge material uh, called DivoClean Mid-Temp. This DivoClean Mid-Temp has a nice overlapping in both temperature ranges, so that's why we can use it to transition. So I have all heaters to 200 degrees, and I set the extruder speed to 15 RPM. That's the maximum speed of the extruder to make it nice and quick. And I set the filament fan speed to 30% because that's what we're gonna use later on. Then I press apply and I'll start the extrusion. So now the heaters will try to reach those temperatures before the extrusion actually starts. And uh, this will take around 10 minutes. After around 10 to 15 minutes, the machine has uh, reached the temperatures and we have an output right now. And now we can transition to the DivoClean mid-temp. Uh, to make the transition as smooth and quick as possible, we need to make sure that the hopper is completely empty. Otherwise, it's gonna be mixing the pellets together and they will make the transition a lot longer. So we could wait until the hopper is completely empty or I could try and vacuum all the pellets out of the hopper. They will go a lot quicker. To be able to do this, I need to remove the grid. So I take my 2.5 millimeters hex key and I remove the two bolts that are closest to the hopper. So I can slide out the grid right now. And now I have access to the hopper. So I made sure there are no pellets left anymore. And now I can put in the DivoClean mid-temp. Put in around 200 grams or 250 grams of DivoClean mid-temp. That should be enough for the complete transition to PET. So now you can see a clear transition between the PLA and the DivoClean mid-temp as the structure is completely different. This is more like a white foamy appearance. So we wait for a couple of minutes to make sure all of the PLA has left the machine uh, before we can uh, bump up the temperatures to 270 degrees. This way we make sure that uh, there's no PLA left in the machine that can degrade uh, at these high temperatures. So now we have a pure output of DivaClean. Uh, we can bump up the temperatures all the way up to 270 degrees. So let's do that in the settings menu. And we'll decrease the extruder speed to 7 RPM because we don't need that fast speed anymore to transition because it's just about increasing the temperatures right now. And then press apply. So now it takes some time again to heat up to these temperatures. In the meantime, you have to make sure the hopper doesn't run completely empty because as a safety mechanism, the machine will shut off after 10 minutes uh, of an empty hopper. Um, but you can disable this feature in the settings menu if you wish. So now all heaters have finally reached 270 degrees after a few minutes waiting, so we can make the final transition to the pet. So here we're gonna do the same to make the transition smooth and quick. We're gonna empty the hopper with the vacuum cleaner. And then I can introduce the pet. And I'm starting off with just a bit. So I'm gonna fill the hopper halfway. So then the next trick is uh, when processing difficult materials like this, uh, shredded materials, regrinds, or sometimes even powders, you need some uh, feeding aid because these materials have quite a rough structure and they have the tendency to form cohesive structures inside the hopper, which prevent it from feeding in nicely. And if the material doesn't feed in nicely, you will never have a consistent output and good quality filament. So that's why we have the feeder right here and it fits in the hopper like this. We already have the grid removed. If you plug it into a power socket, it starts giving off vibratory pulses. And what this does, it breaks up any bridge or rat hole that is forming, any cohesive structure and make sure it feeds in nicely into the screw. We understand that PET can be a tricky material. That's why we want to share the issues we faced and how we solved them. 
something that might be happening is that there's almost no output coming out or it's going very slowly as you can see right here there's almost nothing coming out uh, this could be caused by several things for example the nozzle is too cold uh, which blocks the flow or it's not feeding in correctly well we're already using the feeder and I can see right here that there's no cohesive structures being formed so that's not causing it uh, so maybe it's the nozzle being too cold so what we can do now is we can turn away the fans because of course the, the fans are cooling down the nozzle a bit which blocks the flow a little bit and we just need to get it going so by turning away the fans that can already help a little bit what we can also do is we can increase the rpm of the screw so now it's on 7 as we said it before but we can set it to 15 to really give the flow a short boost press apply and this will generate a bit more pressure and hopefully uh, get rid of the blockage that is occurring right now if this still isn't doing anything useful we can make use of a backup with something to force feed it into the extruder here I have a stick which which is more or less the size of the extruder opening and I can try to force feed the material into the extruder. If I do this for around a minute, try to push quite hard, I force it into the extruder and eventually it must come out. So now we have some PET coming out of the machine. As you can see a clear color change and the texture is also much different from the Devo Clean which came out previously. Uh, you can still see a bit of a rough structure so I'm just gonna let it run for a few minutes to make sure the transition is com complete and there's no Devo Clean left anymore and we have a pure output of PET. So now finally the flow of PET is back and the transition is complete as I don't see a rough structure from the Devo Clean anymore so now we can go into fine tuning but there's one more thing and that is uh, in the beginning I mentioned we need a proper ventilation so Right here, I have a small fume extraction system to make sure I don't inhale any toxic fumes. Um, this makes the whole process a bit safer. And in the meantime, I can place the hopper in place. So now we can start the fine tuning process. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna base every step on what we see coming out of the machine. So we have to pay a lot of attention on what is coming out of the, no out of the nozzle. We use 270 degrees as a starting point which is on the high side for processing pets on this machine, at least for this batch of pets. Please be aware that every kind of pet is, reacts uh, quite different because there are so many different brands of pets and different suppliers that every type of pet or every batch might need slightly different settings. Uh, but for this, it works to get the flow going. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, tweak the settings in steps of five degrees. So for example, at this moment we can see the pet is still a bit liquid. So it's almost impossible to retain in the filament shape. It just drips down too much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease the temperatures in steps of five degrees. We're gonna keep the flat baseline of all the temperatures at the same. Uh, because if you're gonna go straight into a specific profile and tweak individual heaters, things might overcomplicate too quickly. So I'm gonna set all heaters five degrees lower. So patience is key in this process. You have to tweak the settings until you find a nice consistency of the filament. It's also very important to log and capture all your results so you make sure you know what you're doing and you can reproduce your results the next time. Uh, you can log uh, the data from the machine using the USB connection to a computer and using the Diva Vision software. Um, but for this blend of PET, I know that the right settings to use are all heaters on 245 degrees, an RPM of 7, and 15% fan cooling. So I'm gonna set those settings to get the fast forward to nice and consistent filaments. So I just adjusted these settings and I'm gonna give, it a, give the machine a bit of time 
And like I said earlier, patience is key in this process. So for every change you make in settings, you need to give the machine 10 to 15 minutes to uh, get the results you actually want. Because the machine needs some time to cool down or heat up accordingly to what you changed. And then, of course, the change should give an output. So that takes some time. Okay, this is a possible issue you might encounter when processing PET, and that is nozzle buildup. As you can see right here, is some material sticking to the nozzle and it's forming a blob underneath. And this is usually caused because the nozzle is a bit too cold. This might have a few causes, for example, the nozzle plate, which is this black plate, is not in place. Uh, this makes sure the nozzle is insulated nicely. It's also important to make sure the fans are pointed downwards and not upwards to cool the nozzle, or the temperature of heater number one is just too low. So I already have made sure uh, about the first few options, so I'm just going to increase the temperature of heater number one to get rid of this nozzle buildup. In the meantime, I can just have to make sure it just gets pulled out and doesn't fill the entire front and damage the machine. So now the machine has finally reached the settings we put in, uh, which were, are the most optimal for our blend of PET. Now we can jump into the spooling, because it's only worth spooling if the output is nice and consistent and printable, of course, because you want the entire spool to be printable. So now I'm going to start the spooling, and here I already have prepared the spool and clamped the spool holder in place on the spool by just tightening it, and then I place it on the winder shaft, make sure the magnet pulls it all the way to the back, and then I can go to the spooling wizard in the settings menu. Press start spooling and I'm gonna act accordingly to what the machine is telling me to do. So now press continue and what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna cut off the filaments as close as possible to the puller wheels and then I'm gonna guide it through the positioner holes. So there's two openings here and then I'm gonna guide the filament through this little opening in the spool to make it attach. So it's important to keep on pulling on the filament to make sure the tension stays there and doesn't clog in the front. Make sure it slides all the way to the back. Press continue. And now it's gonna build up tension. So during this step, you need to let it run for a few rounds and then you can press continue again and then the spooling process is finished. And now I can just let the machine run for a while until I have a nice full spool of filament. In the meantime, it's important to make sure you keep on refilling the hopper because if the hopper runs too empty, the flow decreases because there's not enough pressure to push out the material and that will mess up your spool. So after a few hours of spooling, we have a full spool of really nice PET. So I'm going to cut off the filaments right here. Then I can pull out the spool. Looks quite nice. I'm pretty sure it's printable. So before we can shut off the machine, we have to do one more thing and that is purging. Because it's very important to not let the PET harden out into the extruder. Because this can really decrease the performances of your machine for the next run. Or it can leave in contamination uh, for your next ex experiments. So let's jump right into it. So here I have some Diva Clean again. I can take off the hopper. And once again, I have to empty the hopper. I'm gonna use a vacuum cleaner. And pour a bit of Diva Clean in. I'll put about 50 grams for now. Uh, once we have put in DivaClean mid-temp, we can turn the RPM to 15 because we don't really care about the quality, we just want to clean it quickly. And the high RPM also causes a lot of turbulence and pressure inside the machine, which makes the clean even more effective. Then I press apply. So then we need to give it a few minutes to purge the machine com completely clean and it's very important that there's no pet left anymore. 
So we're gonna wait until you see a pure output of DivaClean Midtemp. So now we can see DivaClean Midtemp coming out, but it's still mixed with PET. But we need to give it a few more minutes to make sure it's a pure output of DivaClean Midtemp. So after a few minutes, we have a pure output of DivaClean Midtemp and we can finally shut off the machine. So I'm gonna press Top Extrusion and turn it off. So we have our spool of filament so we can make our intended goal and that is a nice 3D print. If you're not going to the 3D printing step straight away, you need to make sure you store your spool in a dry and sealed environment because like I said earlier, your spool of PET, it will take up moisture straight away from the air and this will cause problems during the printing as well as the extrusion. So let's jump into the printing step. So we've obtained a nice spool of PET filament which we can turn into a 3D print. For this we have to find the correct settings for the 3D printer of course. So we can set these settings correctly in our slicer software. In this case, I'm going to make use of Ultimaker Cura, but of course you can make use of any slicer software you have available. So I'm going to take this STL file, which is a scale model of the filament maker. So now I have to find the correct settings for printing PET. So I know from experience that the following settings, they work for recycled PET models. So let's put them in. Printing temperature, we're going to set it to 255 degrees, which is slightly above the melting point and the build plate temperature to 70 degrees. Then we will disable the print cooling because PET has the tendency to have bad layer adhesion since it's not a 3D printing material in the first place. So this gives the material a bit more time to bond to each other. So to compensate for the lack of cooling, we have to decrease the print speed to 20 millimeters per second so we can still retain a nice structure. So now we can slice the file and upload the G-code to the SD card and start printing. So like I said, these settings they work in general for uh, this blend of recycled PET bottles, but there is a lot more fine tuning to be done if you want to get even better results. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more extrusion and 3D printing projects on our channel. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Timo from TDVO. See you next time.